Is pregnancy not in your plans for the immediate future? Are you looking for birth control you can count on but don't have to think about every day? You might want to consider Depro-Provera, the birth control shot. The shot prevents pregnancy for 12 weeks. That's about three whole months of not having to worry about getting pregnant. And it's easy. A quick visit with your healthcare provider, a little poke, and you're covered for 12 weeks. No one even needs to know you're using birth control. How does it work? While the shot contains a hormone, it prevents your body from releasing an egg. It also thickens the mucus of your cervix to make it harder for sperm to enter your uterus. And it's effective. Fewer than 1 in 100 women will get pregnant each year if they get the shot every 12 weeks. The shot doesn't protect against sexually transmitted infections. The feminist movement has accused the Israeli government of adopting a racist policy towards the country's Ethiopian Jews. Activists believe black women are deliberately being given a controversial contraceptive to bring about a drop in the population, a claim the government denies. Thousands of Ethiopians have immigrated to Israel since the 1980s, but their Jewish heritage has been questioned while their social status continues to suffer. For nearly four years, Racheli Mangoli has been running a youth center in one of Israel's poorer communities. Forty-five Ethiopian families live here, but throughout that entire time, only one Ethiopian baby was born in this neighborhood, and that alarmed Racheli. Because I smell something not good. Uh, I know about the discrimination here. When I'm going with the children, I felt this. Even when I'm going to buy something in the uh, super, uh, one woman said to me, I don't understand how can you are standing this, uh, near the people like this. When they give me money, I'm going and washing my hands. After some investigation, Racheli discovered many of the Ethiopian women, keen not to get pregnant while setting up life in a new country, had been placed on the controversial contraceptive Depo Provera, a drug few Israeli women have heard of, let alone use. This woman was first put on it four years ago and underwent repeated injections every three months. She says it's left her with such terrible pains in her hands and back she can no longer work. She insists she was never told about its side effects or offered an alternative. Like many Ethiopians in Israel, she's afraid she'll be deported if she questions the authorities. Dr. Factor is reluctant to give the contraceptive to his patients. He says it's known to delay fertility for months after women come off it and in some cases can cause infertility. Again, the, 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 the safety factor is 100%. As a contraceptive, it's absolutely fine. But at least 10% develop substantial side effects. Uh, side effects like irregular bleeding, the periods may disappear, they may have heavy periods, and it's impossible to reverse these side effects. Until it's worked itself out of the system, you can't reverse these. So it's possible, although the, the contraception works for three months at a time, uh, the side effects may last for two years, three years, four years, five years. In 2004, the American Food and Drug Administration warned against the dangers of the drug, but the World Health Organization refused to restrict its use. Hedve Yal has tried unsuccessfully to draw attention to the fact Ethiopian Israelis are given the drug without being warned of the risks. She claims it's her government's policy and is nothing short of racism. They are, don't want poor or black children and therefore preserve Prevera gives them the, uh, the opportunity to have the control because she, she can take in her, her injection once in three months and she cannot have a children. You know, it's 100% uh, secure from children. Pedro says the policy is working. The number of black babies in Israel is decreasing. But there are no official statistics to back up her claim. Although for community workers and Ethiopian women here, they don't need statistics. They feel their reality speaks for itself. We've come to the clinic where the women get the injections, but no one will talk to us. The health ministry admits it gives the drug, but says it was never its policy to give it only to Ethiopian women and reduce the number of black babies in the country. In their defense, Jewish agencies involved in immigration said they offered several types of contraceptives to Ethiopian women and that all of them participated voluntarily in family planning. Paulus Lear, RT, Israel.
Well, for more on this, we're joined live by Dr. Yifat Bitten from the Israeli Anti-Discrimination Legal Center, Tamura, and also by Professor Zvi Bentwich, immunologist and human rights activist. Well, thank you both for joining us. So to you first, Dr. Bitten, do you believe the findings of this human rights group reveal a genuine problem with racism in Israel? I certainly do not think so. I uh, would say that we are, and personally I am very sensitive, as, especially towards uh, the Ethiopian uh, issue, and I don't think there is uh, any ground to suspect a, a, an official policy of that kind. I, of course, do not know sufficiently the specifics of the, ra of the cases uh, raised by the Dr. Bito. Well, let's, let's give Dr. Bitten a chance to actually respond to that then. What's, what's your view on that? Okay, so we know the statistics, and the statistics speak to themselves. Uh, what it's are the statistics? It's not a matter of view, it's a matter of statistics, as Professor Bentowitz just said. And uh, the Ishale Isha, Women to Women uh, Center in Haifa, the statistics are that 60% of the women uh, receiving this contraceptive, this controversial uh, one, are Ethiopian Jews. And you have to understand that Ethiopians in Israel comprise of or consist up to only 1% of the population. So the gap here is just impossible to, to reconcile in any logical uh, manner that would, you know, just somehow resist the uh, claim of racism. So I don't think, as Professor Bentowitz said, that this is something that has to be official. This is a problem with racism today, that, it, that nothing is official. But everything, you know, as um, in, in, in the, on the ground and statistically and the, uh, and the consequences of what is not official is definitely racism and is definitely racist in that manner. And this is how sociologists today look at racism as something that is uh, um, eventually bringing upon very discriminatory um, consequences. Okay, well, well, well hang on just a moment. Professor Bentwich, you, you've heard the, uh, the statistics okay. there. How do you respond yes. to that then? Yes. Uh, I, I would only say two things. Number one, I'm not uh, against looking and inquiring the claim. If, if there is a claim, one should investigate. But when asked about official attitudes, official policy, official uh, uh, medical policy, I uh, uh, am very reluctant to accept uh, that that is indeed a policy of racism on that part. To the best of my knowledge, and I have looked into that repeatedly many times, and I, again I emphasize I am not alluding to this specific case. I don't think there is any ground to suspect the medical community or the medical official uh, in uh, instituting such a policy. It can be a case that has to be inquired into, but it de definitely does not reflect a policy that uh, is official. Well, we heard the words uh, investigation and inquiry there. Dr. Bitten, do you believe an official investigation into this issue uh, needs to take place? But the question is, of course, what, what is official? Um, well, yes, of course, these are shocking statistics, but what is more important is the way by which it's going to be uh, uh, um, conducted, because the problem is that if Dr. we're Bitten. again and again looking for official you know, racist uh, um, um, instructions to, th that would not work. But what I'm looking for is, for example, thinking about doctors that think that for exact, hey, just a second please, that for Ethiopian women it is better for them not to have children. This is something that doctors should have to think themselves if that was something that they would have done for white Jewish uh, Israeli woman Dr. as well. Vito, this is the whole Dr. Vito, that they should if ask you will. Even if they think that they're working for the best interest of that patient, they still have to ask themselves, is that exactly what they would do for Jewish women as well? All right. After you have finished, Dr. Beaton, and you allow me to, to put in a word, I think we all agree that racism should not take place and we are fighting racism daily and, and where we think it exists. 
I do not, and I emphasize, I do not think that the problem you allude to is a major problem in Israel. There are other serious problems of racism in Israel, but that is not the one that we think is a major one. And I don't think that uh, a, an inquiry of the kind that is needed cannot be made. If you ask me, if you present the cases to our organization, we would be happy to look into that. But I think you make too strong a case with too little evidence to support it. Okay, you mentioned the word uh, racism there. So, uh, Dr. Bitten, how serious is the issue well, of you know, racial uh, segregation in Israel? Who, uh, whose perspective we're taking, because if we take the women... Well, this is exactly the case. Maybe this is not the biggest uh, discrimination or discriminatory practices against Ethiopian Jews in, is in Israel. They suffer from so many, but that does not entail, you know, anything about not needing to deal with this one. We're talking about new lives coming to this world of Ethiopian people. So even if the numbers are not huge, it's still a big, big issue because of the content of this uh, story. And second of all, uh, uh, Ethiopian Jews in Israel are really uh, at one of the lowest positions of, of, of Jews in Israel today. And this is very saddening to see this only as, you know, another step, another layer, another brick in the wall that they, of discrimination that they have to deal with every day. For them, it's a, it's, it's a consistent, uh, you know, mechanism of discrimination that they suffer from. Okay, they don't well, think 